Hello, Lord of the Ring tubers, and welcome to episode one of Let's Play The Third Age Total War, a mod for Medieval 2 Total War and its expansion kingdoms. I'll be posting links under the video for uh, to the forum and all that. I'm also using a sub-mod compilation called Moss, M-O-S, that adds all kinds of stuff, and uh, again, I'll have a link for that under the video. So, with all that said, let's get to it. Um, one thing to note early on here is the intro episode, i.e. this one, I'm not sure just how far we'll get because it's going to take a while to explain how it's going to work and I have to do some mod selection as I start the game, but uh, fear not, within an episode or two we should get some serious action. So in my teasers before I showed you kind of all the uh, factions, so I'm not going to bother explaining those again, other than to mention, where is it, there's a couple new ones and of note um, the... One of the elven faction, not the high elves, the sylvan elves, I believe, they've been split into two. So there's the elves of Lorien, with Lord Celeborn in the sort of south there, and there should be somewhere up here the other one. Where are they? Elves of Lorien, El sylvan elves. Yeah, so this is the old one. Sylvan elves used to have both. Now they're split in two, so that's one thing of note. And then the other thing, I think there's one more new faction. Uh... Yes, the Wild Men of Dunland. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about them. They're kind of like a neutral faction, sort of. Well, evil, maybe. I don't know. But um, more neutral than the rest. Human and whatever. I don't know. Who? Don't ask me. I don't know. Anyway, those are the two, or the, yeah, the two sort of new factions. I decided after a bit of thinking that although it'd be fun to play as Gondor, you kind of get stuck fighting giant stacks over and over again, and it gets very repetitive. It's a good campaign. Uh, and various other things. I thought about playing as Mordor with evil, but they don't get cavalry, which yeah, I'm not very good with no cavalry. Um, so I decided I would play with a faction that probably hasn't seen a lot of face time because I haven't used them myself very much even. And we're going to play as Dale, and I explained them a little bit. They're kind of in an interesting position here. They're generally allied with the dwarves, which are to the north, and if we're lucky we can get allied with the Sylvan Elves in the Mirkwood Forest there. And we'll probably mostly be fighting uh, Rune early on, and then Mordor later as we breach, reach southwards, or perhaps some orcs if we, if they, if, if say by some chance the orcs take out the dwarves up north, then we'll have to fight more orcs, but we'll probably be trying to expand to where Rune normally is, kind of this area of the map, and try to hold on to our alliances with the dwarves and the elves if possible. The idea being to break Rune and Mordor before Mordor and everyone else kills Gondor and Rohan. That's that's the plan. We'll see how it goes. I will be playing on long campaign. Um, all you need is 35 regions, um, including you know a bunch of stuff around there, um, which should be quite doable as far as I can see. And I'll be playing on hard hard. Um, I'm not the best of this game, and I, I played a bit of practice early on. Um, and I think this will be fair. It should be challenging without being um, too easy. And because I have to, well, I have to, because I'm uh, <laughs> I'm commentating, it uh, sort of decreases my skill a little bit, if you've ever tried it yourself or if you're wondering. Um, just the, the process of trying to talk and explain things makes you kind of less competent or something. I don't know how to explain it exactly, but, you know, that's, that's the plan anyway. So um, I'll leave managing cities on and no battle time limit is fine definitely don't want advice. In fact, I believe if you turn that on, you can crash the game if you've got all these mods installed. So it's a good idea to leave it off. So let's get to it. Um, there are some excellent intro videos here. I don't think I really want to show them all. I want to get to the campaign a bit quicker. But there's some dudes. Hopefully that's not super, super loud. Um, I'll have to check that later. This is not tied to my camp music. Anyway, there's, there's a guy that makes awesome videos using um, the mod resources here. Anyway, I'm just going to skip it. Point is, there's uh, nice intro videos for all the different factions, and um, for one thing, it seems very loud, so I'm going to skip that. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, let's let's get to the game, and I'll start explaining and, and my strategy and uh, showing how I want to play this. Now, yes, one thing is, since I have MOS installed, M-O-S, however you pronounce it, MOS, um, the, 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 the sub-mod compilation. There's going to be a load of settings here. Now, I'm not 100% sure the best answer, but most of these give you um, yes or no, enable a sub-mod or not. Um, so this adds sort of counter crusades, like in this game, invasions are called crusades, and the evil factions get those, and now jihads or jihads, however you pronounce it, 
um, the other sort of counter to it from the original game called Tol Arkham. I have no idea. Akarms? However you pronounce that. Tol Akarms, let's say. Um, let's enable those. I've never used them before, so we'll give it a try. It's counter, counter crusades, counter invasions. And this one says, uh, when do you want the beginning of an invasion? I'm going to let them start default times, I believe. Yeah, because the first few turns, um, I don't want go um, <laughs> I don't want Gondor or Rohan to fall too early, so we're gonna leave early invasions off. Garrison script is part of the normal uh, Third Age Total War, and what it does is, like as it says, certain cities will get instant uh, troops if you attack them, so you won't see it on the map until you attack them, and they drive me crazy. Now they have a good point. There's a good reason to have them in game. Um, it probably makes it so the AI doesn't kill each other so quickly, but personally they drive me nuts because I'm not, I never remember which towns have the garrison script, so I'll attack a town with a moderate sized army that has like two or three units defending it, and suddenly it'll have a full stack defending it. So I don't like that very much, and I am playing it on hard anyway, so it should be okay to have it off. Um, resurrecting allied factions, another script seems okay. Um, I think all it means is that if, say, the dwarves were defeated, if we capture their old capital, um, we can give them back, we can recreate the dwarves even if they've been destroyed, so that sounds fun. Uh, I'm probably not going to worry about Boromir, we're not probably ever going to meet him, so I'll just turn it off for now. Might save a little bit of script time, I don't know. Uh, diplomacy script, I don't really know. Um, I think the idea is it keeps good allied with good and evil allied with evil, which sounds fair to me. These things I really have no idea about. Um, do I want to give Saruman some documents? No. <laughs> I don't know what it does. Do I want to give Rune some mysterious documents? Let's just go with no. Um, and Saruman, okay, obviously he's a bad guy. Oh man, there's so many of these. This is going to take the whole video. Um, do I want to... We should prepare. I, I really don't know. Let's just uh, let's turn the script off because I don't know what it does, honestly. I really have no idea for some of these. I, I spent some time reading up on them, but there's just so many. It would take forever. Well, it would take a while. <laughs> um, Ruda, Rudar. Uh, they help out the orcs of Gundabad. We probably won't be dealing with them much anyway. Um, immortal heroes are kind of cool because, you know, they are like Gandalf and stuff. They shouldn't die if they get if you take a stray arrow to the knee <laughs> or something, uh, they shouldn't be put out of commission. Um, and it's not t super cheap, because from what I understand, when they respawn, they lose all of their traits and abilities, so they get like super weakened. So say you were, say you had Boromir or whatever, if he was killed in battle with this script on, he'll resurrect in his capital or wherever. Yeah, he'll resurrect in his capital, but he'll lose all of his... Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure he'll lose all of his abilities, so um, it's probably fair. You know, it's not too bad. Um, do you want? Sure. Just let you know what's going on, I guess. Counter invasions, I think, are somewhat complicated. I'm going to actually turn it off. There's a way of helping out factions that have been invaded, um, and you can get money or units that you get sent to them to help or something. I'm going to turn it off because I don't know how it works, mostly. Um, also, you can return... Yeah, this is returning settlements to allies. Seems like a fair idea. Kind of like the resurrecting one, the resurrecting allies. I'm going to turn these off. Well, no, because Dwarves and Dale, we're allies, so supposedly there's a way to to, you know, alert the dwarves that we need help with this. So, um, I'll turn it on and we'll see if I can get it to work. Um, I, I don't know. We're not going to begin with Arnor Reforged. That sounds a little bit too overpowered. Immortal Nazgul is probably fair, but it's not very nice. I'm going to turn it off. If I was playing as Mortar, I would certainly have it on, but, um, you know, I know I have Heroes on and Nazgul off, but that's just how I feel like it today. Now this thing, I don't know. What does this do? We're almost out. We're almost done, folks. Um, so we can kill some uh, re some kings off. Sure, I, I always wanted to kill some bad kings. This thing makes it super hard, from what I understand. 
So um, let's turn it off because I don't want it super hard yet. It's only my first let's play of Total War. I don't want it to be super difficult. This thing means you must have a governor in each city, which becomes very expensive because the maintenance for each governor general is also pretty expensive. So I'm going to turn that off for now. Um, spawning of additional units. Um, Dale. Oh, I guess this gives us some dwarves as the faction Dale. So sure, that sounds cool. Why not? We're allied with dwarves. Like traditionally, Dale and dwarves are like friends. So probably some of them would fight for us. That sure sounds cool. This thing again. I don't know a whole lot about this. This one. Try to remember all these uh, key combinations so I can figure out how this works. <laughs> oh, anyway, let's just leave that alone. And uh, all right. So um, story. You know, um, this is from the Hobbit, right? Black Arrow killed Smog. Um, that was good news. You can read that if you want. Anyway, I've spent enough time. So anyway, <laughs> much, okay, let's see, get my controls here. The older Total War games use different controls than like the newer ones. I've been playing Rome Total War 2 recently. So anyway, we've got how many cities? One, two, three, four cities? Not a whole lot. I'd say we start fairly weak compared to a lot of other uh, nations. Now, uh, we do have an army way over here. I don't know what this I guy's know. up to. Arnkin, he's not a very good general. One command star, no respect. Uh, not very good. But, uh, you know, we got a guy. Um, I'll go over some of the units in this one too, the beginning units. We got our spy. Uh, wooden castle over here. It does, the game does try to show you where some of the nearby settlements are. So I know there's one here, one here. But one of the difficulties I've always found about this mod is it can be very hard to find nearby cities. So I might do a little trick here in this uh, video just to, to make things easier later on. Finding finding the cities is hard. So anyway, Dale. This should be our capital city. Um, it's got, you know, roads. It's got some nice buildings. You know, it's a good start. Also, one cool thing about this mod is you can, uh, for every city, every settlement in the game, you can uh, read a bit about the lore and it will tell you kind of uh, special units and stuff. And this means that it would be part of the garrison script if I had it turned on. So we've got a few special units that you can only recruit here, potentially. So that's cool. And um, at the moment we can recruit, let's see, Dalesman. Got bonus versus cavalry and armor, so that's always handy. Not a whole lot of attack or anything, but uh, armor piercing is always good to, ha to have. Uh, javelin throwers. Spearmen. And uh, archers. Those are my archers. Three missile isn't too bad. It's not great, but it's okay. So I don't even have any real standard uh, infantry right now. The hearth watchmen are probably my closest to standard, and they're really weak. I guess these guys actually might be a little bit better. So I'm going to have to make armies with those guys. And um, usually what I do in, in Total War games, especially Third Age, is you got to work on your economy early on. Well, that's cool. I don't even know what this does. All kinds of special buildings. So this is probably how you get help from the dwarves or something. You build this for five grand, and then you can send an eagle or a great white raven off to go talk to the dwarves or something. I don't know. Tomes for culture. Ah, oh, man, there's so much stuff. Chicken farms. Chicken farms give population growth. Farming is food and pro population growth. Roads are money and dis travel on the map. Market is money. Leather Tanner gives you upgrades for your uh, armor for your units. Ballistas are always handy. Siege siege weapons. And uh, Yeomen. So this could give us some uh, basic cavalry. That would probably be a good idea to get some of these guys early on too. Because at the moment I can't recruit any here. So that's Dale. I I'm just going to do this quick for most of them just to give you an idea of what I've got. Probably for this episode we're not really going to get more than a, a basic overview of, this, of the place done. And then off camera I'll spend some time you know, thinking about stuff. And I, I'm looking for uh, advice, too, on how to play, if anyone has suggestions. So this is a... Oh, also, by the way, the, Dale is only a... a, a uh, it's our capital, but it's not a, it's only a large town. It's not even a city. Eskaroth, Eskaroth is actually a large city already. So this is uh, a much better town. It will have far more buildings, like Ballista's abilities. It's connected to a river, so it can get river trade, like the Merchant's Wharf. Those are always really good for making profit. 
and it just has like more tiers of buildings so actually you might get better recruitment nope never mind that <laughs> but better buildings anyway um, even though there's not a whole lot built at the moment um, much higher capacity so mostly the same buildings standing stones for culture um, like uh, the Kingdom's expansion, I think when you're playing the Britannia version, to recruit units will require, where does it say? It says on the buildings, right? Um, it has a culture requirement, so we must have a certain amount of Dale culture to recruit them, which is right here. We should have lots, or Northmen, sorry. So anyway, that's what we got for there. River Run is not even, oh, this is a horrible city. It's not even, it's a village. So we're not going to be able to do anything here. There's no recruiting, no nothing they don't even have walls this place is horrible grass guard has at least a wooden palisade and we can build roads so that'll be the first thing for sure no doubt about it roads and you can actually see here just building that road will take us from 89 trade to 98 so it'll make us 10 bucks a turn and uh, maybe a little bit more from administrative and a little bit less from corruption but just building that one road will help out a little bit um so that's always a good priority, building roads. Unfortunately, this place won't. So we've got to put low taxes so that hopefully it grows a little bit faster. And I should probably build the town watch here so it has something for units. So I can get that. Um, I'll probably, most of the time I stick with low taxes just to promote growth. Except for perhaps something that's already large, like a large city. I'm not terribly concerned about this thing becoming... Um, a huge city it needs 28,000 people that will take you know the whole damn game pretty much so for now I'll probably use this to make money either normal or high tax just so I get a little bit more income um, that's an extra hundred a turn I'll take it and for buildings up here what would be smart we do have basic roads dirt roads but gravel roads another new mod item um, I'm not sure just how much more money they'll give us let's just have a quick look here so yeah, look at that. Building this road will go 200 to 325 trade. So that's um, that's a pretty good improvement for just a road. So I'll take that. And then Esgaroth probably is going to get the same thing. you got to focus, I find, on economy early on. So we'll probably build the better roads here again. We're going from 200 to 300. So that gives us an extra 200 bucks a turn just from those. So that should help. Uh, we will need units quickly though. Um, I want to get most of these rebel settlements before uh, my neighbors do, because um, Rune will be over here, somewhere over here, and they'll be pushing over quickly. Uh, the Sylvan Elves kind of stick to the forest a little bit from my experiences, and the Dwarves will probably stick to the mountains and fight um, goblins and stuff over this way. So probably, you know, we'll mostly be dealing with Rune. Now, um, I've set buildings for everywhere. Uh, this was your financial overview. We're making a bit of money anyway. And uh, I can show more stuff later on. Um, we've got factions. It keeps track of all that stuff. You can have a look at that if you want. Diplomacy for now. You need diplomats. I don't even think we have a diplomat, honestly. Um, there's one more thing I want to do. What was it going to be? Oh, right. I'm just going to cheat one thing. And maybe some of you are shaking your heads right now. But I'm going to turn it off. The only reason I turn this on at all is if I remember correctly, it now remembers where the cities are, so I don't have to search so hard for them. I'm pretty sure, maybe not, maybe I'm imagining. I'm not going to play with it on or anything. Um, for one, it turns down the end turns, it slows down the end turns too much. But uh, anyway, that's, I think, it for the first turn. I guess I should decide what I'm going to attack. I've got this army up here. There could honestly be a town up here but I don't know so what I'll probably do is aim for this one speed him up a little bit put my spy down here so um, for whatever reason rebels start outside of their city he'll move in next turn and uh, he's gonna have four units and a general defending it so I'll probably gonna aim for taking that one out first and uh, maybe even go for over here this is getting really close to rune territory um, on the edge of uh, the lake here or C, whatever it is. Um, so let's actually pull this guy back, because that's the plan. We're going to try to take a raw, yes. I believe. Even though there's probably a city right over there that I just don't know about. And I'll pick up a few spare units on the way. I'll send some over. I'll, I'll decide that uh, between episodes, maybe. Because all he's got is one unit of actually really good longbowmen. I don't want to lose those guys. 
uh, some of the lousy axemen and some spearmen. So that's not going to be enough to take that city on his own, probably. So he'll have to pick up some more longbowmen. Actually, that's pretty good. Rangers, too. Wow. All right, so we got some awesome archers. Um, so, yeah, with some archers and maybe some extra watchmen, there is quite a few units just sitting around. They do start off with some nice units, so we just can't replenish them once they're dead. So anyway, that's the plan. I'm going to ferry some units down here to try to take Aero as early as possible. And then maybe this one, whatever that's called, and have to start exploring. Um, I do have... Oh, I've got another yes, army up here, Lord. too. Wow. I don't even know. There must be more stuff, more cities around. I just don't know where they are. Also, a good idea, I forgot, is to build... How do I do this, even? Oh, I don't have enough money. You build watchtowers all over the place, and then you can see your land so it's not um, in fog of war all the time. Unfortunately, we spent all our money, on, so we can't do that. Anyway, let's pull them down yes. here. Two generals with some archers will be good. This will be far more than we'll need to take Aeron. So good. So that's the plan. Now I'm only going to do this once. I'll show you the end turn progress just this one time. Um, from now on, basically every other turn, I will cut this section of the video out because um, it takes, I think, about a minute, a, min a minute to a minute and a half to go through the end turn pr progress. And uh, when I'm trying to make videos of, you know, 20 minutes or so, 20, 20, 20 to 30 minutes, I don't want this to take up the entire episode when I'm skipping through turns much quicker later on. Um, so anyway, I'm just showing you what happens on the end turn for now, just once, you know, and then after this I'll cut it out basically. Anyway, so basically, yeah, uh, this will basically wrap up the video once I end this turn. Um... I'm open to suggestions on uh, strategies and, and goals for this game, I especially if you're a, a third age uh, veteran and you know uh, more about it than I do, perhaps. Um, once we've done a couple battles, you'll see kind of how my strategy, my battle strategy works, and maybe you'll be able to suggest some tips and improvements. And I mean, I told you sort of my basic overall strategy to take uh, some land to the south and to the east as quickly as possible. Can't just play defensive in this game, you've got to try to take land. So yeah, um, have some discussion. I probably won't be uploading this this series, this Let's Play, as quickly as my other games. I'm going to plan on just doing one episode every couple days for it, and that way it'll leave a bit of room for some, uh, some discussion in the comment section in between videos. That's kind of my plan. And I'll probably aim for about 30 minute episodes, give or take. And anyway, there you go. So you see just how long it takes to uh, end your turn. And this is talking another event. Uh, Palantiris, you know, those are the things that you see all over. I don't know how it works. So the point is, we we lost a ton of money because I spent it all, but we are making net a little bit of money, which is good. We're pretty bad financially and militarily, so we've got major improvements needed. Uh, definitely got to improve. And uh, retinue, so King Bard, I didn't even show you. I should have showed you King Bard, yeah. King Bard is in Dale. He's a pretty awesome general, look at that. 8 command stars, 8 respect, tons of authority, King of Dale. I can actually probably give out some of these things. Yeah, the uh, Lord Marshal and Lord Chancellor. I should probably pass those off to a different uh, general and put them in charge of a different city just to spread out some of the, some of the buffs. And um, one of the cool things about this mod is it adds uh, a total to your squalor and movement and stuff, um, which just helps you keep track of how good your generals are. Um, there's a ton of traits. I'm not going to go through them all because it would take forever. <laughs> Just trust me that most of these are pretty good. Um, I think. You know, you, they, they're generally pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> anyway, I'll stop rambling on. And uh, I will do this turn on the next video. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I'm going to gather my guys up, pick up some archers, and take a raw and potentially more cities as soon as possible. Uh, I could send my spy in, but he's only got a 50% chance, so I've got to be careful with that. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and stay tuned for more exciting episodes of Let's Play Third Age Total War with me, Blue Ankylo.